The free camera app from Blackmagic Design is finally here for Android. So let's jump right in and discover all of its tools and features and explore the interface. So let's have a look. So I'll cover the interface. I'll go from left to right and then from the top to bottom. All right, so first out, you want to head over to the Google Play Store and search for Blackmagic Camera. The app you're looking for is by Blackmagic Design Incorporated. So simply hit download and install. Here we are in the camera app, and this is what the interface looks like. So let's go over what everything does, shall we? Starting from the top left, we have the lens. And the lenses you have available will vary depending on what uh, smartphone you have. So I am using the Google Pixel 7 Pro and therefore I can choose a wide angle, a normal and a telephoto one as well as the front one and two selfie cameras. Right next to it we have the frames per second. So here you can choose your desired FPS for the project you're doing. To the right of FPS we have the shutter. This is set to shutter speed at the moment. How fast the shutter closes. You can change this to shutter angle if you're more used to working with film cameras. Then we have ISO which is the sensitivity of the sensor. Lower values means lower noise. By default, the white balance or color temperature is set to auto, and this is located next to the ISO. So if you click on the blue auto, it will disable auto, and you can change to a manual temperature instead, or toggle between a few presets to the right of that. And to the right of white balance, closely connected, is the tint, which controls the pink or green tint in the image. Heading over to the top right, we have overlays, and the top overlay is zebras, which shows you the overexposed areas of the image. I prefer to increase zebras to 95%. You can see, especially on the hood, the car has blown out highlights. Underneath, we have focus peaking, which lets you show what's in focus. Since this is a wide angle, basically everything is in focus. And we'll get back to this feature in just a sec. Close to the record button, we have various overlays. So you can use crosshairs or a gyroscope. So you can see the tilt of the image or rule of thirds. Underneath the overlays, we have aspect ratio markers that lets you preview various aspect ratios if you're doing a cinematic or a more uh, vintage 4x3 aspect ratio for example. You can also change the safe frame or scaling of the aspect ratio markers. Finally at the bottom is a super helpful exposure guide which is called false color. What you want is the image to be in the light gray uh, zone as much as you can, with red being overexposed and purple being underexposed. This is a very helpful guide that lets you easily nail perfect exposure. Underneath the guides we have focus, which is currently set to autofocus. If you hit the blue auto, it will go into manual focus. You can turn the focus wheel yourself using the slider to the right. So let's go in for a close-up of the car headlights. And the focus peaking assist, which I showed previously. Now it's a lot easier to see what's in focus. You can see the headlights crisp in red. Underneath the focus modes, we have exposure compensation, and I would recommend having this at zero most of the time. Then we have options for choosing what kind of image stabilization you want. So some cameras have an optical stabilizer, and you also have the option to stabilize both optically or digitally as well. Then we have a focus magnifier, and this is only for zooming into the image. It's not changing the lens, so beware of using this, as it will decrease the image quality. At the bottom we have various slate information, such as the reel, the scene, 
the take. If the last uh, take was a good clip. And if it's in interior or uh, daylight and nighttime, etc. You can also change various project settings here, such as the director and which camera it is. When you're ready for a take, simply hit the big red record button. You can hide or unhide the overlays by swiping up or down on the screen. You can preview the clips you've shot in the media tab. Here you find a collection of all clips you've shot for this project. Underneath media we have the chat feature which lets you chat with colleagues using Blackmagic Cloud. Finally let's jump into the settings of the Blackmagic camera app and see what settings we can change. Starting from the top we have the record tab. This is where we can change which codec. H.265 is a better quality codec, whereas H.264 is a more common codec. Then you can change the resolution and the color space. I'd recommend leaving it at Rec. 709 if you're not a professional colorist. In the camera tab, you can enable vertical video for shooting those sweet TikTok videos. Here you can also change the shutter measurement from speed to angle if you're more used to working with film cameras. In the audio tab you can change if you want to use a external microphone and the sample rate for the recording as well as audio metering. In the monitor tab you can change what color you want specific guides or tools to be. You can hide or unhide histogram and the remaining storage, etc. In the media tab, you can choose to record proxy media, what file name convention you want to use, etc. In the presets, you can save or load custom setting presets. Closing in at the bottom, you can log into your Blackmagic Cloud account to connect to Blackmagic Cloud Services and then you can reset and read more about the app at the bottom. So I hope this overview was helpful to you and if you liked this video please consider subscribing that helps me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. If you liked this video then you might perhaps like one of these other two videos that I made.